thought that since I just finished How to Train Your Dragon, that I should give it a review. And I could just do what I usually do, what I normally do, which is to write something, because that's really fun for me. But then I decided <laughs> that I should try my, be try my best to speak in my, in my best Scottish brogue to give the review. And I know that I sound like a fool, but no matter. It's not much different than a normally sound. <laughs> so, how to train your dragon. I don't really remember who wrote it, but I definitely know that David Tennant was the performer and he did a wonderful performance. It was amazing. Amazing. I loved it. Really, it was fantastic. That's what I'm trying to imitate him in my best Scottish brogue, which is terrible. <sighs> so, the book was much shorter than I thought it would be. I thought it would be much longer. Uh, it is actually quite short as an audiobook. It's almost three hours. Only three hours long. Not very long. Nothing compared to a sizable book. It must be this big. I think there is at least two sequels. My, my kids have listened to it over and over again. But the problem with the audiobook, there is one criticism that I, is very, quite severe. They don't, he doesn't, although, it, although David Tennant, he speaks very well and he does a great job acting, the sound mixing can be quite difficult on the ear because he doesn't always speak in the same medium tones. Sometimes he speaks quite softly like this. And then sometimes he speaks quite loudly. And that is quite annoying, especially when you're in the car and you're trying to listen to it with lots of little children, like I, like I do, do, do. <laughs> I really can't do this. This is not very good. But it's quite fun. So the book had no girls in it. It would definitely not have won any kind of award or prize for passing the Bechdel test, because it definitely did not. There was maybe one girl in the entire entire thing, and that was the mother, and her name was mentioned only one time, and I don't even think she had any lines. But that's okay, the book wasn't about women, it was about little boys and their initiation ceremony. I really quite liked the humor. The humor was quite enjoyable. It was like juxtaposing this culture of Viking initiation brutality, getting into the tribe of the hairy hooligans and the meatheads. It was juxtaposing that with this culture of today, of, you know, the fears that we all have of checking books out of the library and what a great hero that Viking was for stealing the book right out of the meathead public library from out of the under the nose of the scary hairy librarians. That was very, very funny to me. The other thing that was quite funny was this was kind of a meta a meta-analysis of what it's like to write a book. They had all kinds of humor that's it's the same exact kind of humor as the Alcatraz books by Brandon Sanderson, that are, <laughs> where it's just making fun of the industry. I, I really like it when I mean, it's applied to books, but I don't quite like it at all when it's applied to film. I don't know why, but the meta-film movies, just movies about making movies is just quite boring. But when it's applied to books, it's maybe interesting to me because it's something that I can relate to. Uh, now I sound quite Russian, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. to, be, to tell the truth, I really think that my, my, my best Scottish brogue is more of a cross between some kind of imitation Indian, imitation Russian. <laughs> when I speak the Russian, the Russian, Russian accent, and I have to, I, you have to speak and like swallow your L's. <laughs> but that is not what I'm trying to do. I actually think I might be speaking a little bit like an Irish person, but actually the truth is, I just sound like a crazy fool. <laughs> I'm quite sure my sisters are going to tell me about it if they end up watching this, which is probably not very likely. Anyway, the other thing that I really like about the book was the message, you can become a hero the hard way. That's quite funny. It's also quite enjoyable and good message for all children. I would listen to this book again in a heartbeat. I think there are two sequels, so I think I'll go listen to those as well. Uh, David Tennant does a great job. 
I absolutely loved it. I, I really, really like the author, though. I, I have to say, this book was nothing whatsoever in any way similar, except in names of people and in names of places, to the plot of the movie, which I haven't seen, but I've heard it in the background sometimes. There is not much similar. This movie is about, or this film, <laughs> this this book is about a boy who's normal, not a scrawny little whippersnapper. <laughs> he's more like just this normal fellow, and he's trying to do his, the, his best. What I liked about it too was he was quite nice to his friend. Uh, I, I, it was quite hard for me to remember the names of all of the boys because they were all these sort of strange monikers like, uh, what were they? Snot low, snot nose, snot loud, dragon's breath, things like this. I don't really remember, but I do remember. What I do remember was that uh, Hiccup was quite nice to the boys, and he was very kind, even though they were sometimes kind of a jerk. Uh, One of them was Fish Legs. Yeah, he was quite, he was quite nice to Fish Legs, even though Fish Legs was pretty much quite, quite a big loser, and got him into lots of bad situations that were justifiable for him to get angry, but he chose not to be. That's a good example for me, children. I, I quite like that. I also like that there was real consequences, like people dying and people getting hurt, or at least the threat of it, and exile, permanent exile. That was part of the story. I quite like that. Anyway, that's about all I have to say about the book. I give it a 10 stars, or I guess for Amazon, 5 stars. <laughs> quite enjoyable to listen to. And now I have to speak with a Scottish broke, which doesn't do me any favours. Me bonnie Scottish broke. Alright, that's enough.